everybody. I'm glad that you have decided to take some time to watch our Sunday night video. And I'm excited about this continuing series as we've been talking about change and the kinds of changes that occur in our lives or maybe need to occur in our lives. We started off talking about the seasons of change and how life continues to change around us. And our responsibility is to do good and be joyful no matter the circumstances. And then last week we talked about no pain, no gain and how that applies to our spiritual lives as well. Now if you have missed either of those videos or any of our past videos, there's a couple things you can do. You can scroll back through the Facebook page and find the ones that you have missed or uh, perhaps an easier option is to go to our YouTube channel and look at the videos that are there. You'll be able to find them all pretty easily. And if you want to go to Southside Church of Christ, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, that'll get you there. And if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, that'll help too. Then that way you'll automatically know when new videos have been uploaded. Tonight, we're going to talk about something that I call the someone syndrome. Now, here's how the someone syndrome plays out. Uh, you see something or someone that needs attention, okay? It, it might be a person who really could stand to make changes in their life, or it could be a leaky faucet, or... It could be a ministry in the church that either needs some improvement or really needs to get up off the ground, you know. And most of the time, our thought process, when we see situations like that, our thought process goes something like this. You know, someone needs to do something about that. Someone should fix that. Someone should step up and help that person figure this out. Meanwhile, that someone that should be stepping up all along is probably you. Let me tell you about a guy who really struggled with the someone syndrome. The really unfortunate part about this guy's story is not just that he struggled with the someone syndrome, but that he was someone who never should have dealt with this because he was king. And of all the people that should not have to deal with the someone syndrome, it should be a king. And the king we're talking about tonight is King Saul. You want to grab your Bibles and you want to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to read a good bit from there tonight. But before we do that, I think it's important to remember something about King Saul. And to do that, we need to go back to when he was first being chosen as king. Back in 1 Samuel chapter 9, when Saul is first chosen to be king, notice in verse 2 the description that we have of Saul. It says, A handsome young man... There was not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. From his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the people. Now, that sounds like a king, right? Saul looked the part. He looked like a king more than anyone else in Israel. He was tall. He was handsome. He looked like the kind of person who would take charge. He looked like the kind of person who would lead the way. But that really was never the kind of king Saul turned out to be. And that really is on display in chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. If you'll turn over there, we're going to read several verses together. And I encourage you to, to pay close attention to exactly what Saul does and does not do in these verses. Starting with verse 1 of 1 Samuel 17. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered at Soko 
which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah, in Iphus Dibmim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and his shield-bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now notice, first of all, from the very beginning, we're told that the Philistines have just barged right into Israel's territory. The very first verse says that they set up camp in land that belonged to Judah. So they came barging into Israel, they've set up camp, and then they send out their champion to taunt Israel. Now, I think if ever there was an opportunity for the king of Israel to stand up and lead the way, this was it. If ever there was a battle or a fight tailor-made for the king, this is it, right? I mean, this is the time when Saul should have stepped out there and been the king that everyone thought he was going to be. But did you notice what we read in that last verse? It's one thing to say that the army was scared. It's one thing to say that these men who, who were fighting for Israel were afraid. But it says that Saul himself also was dismayed and greatly afraid. So Saul's response to this challenge from Goliath is, hmm, you know, it would be nice if someone would go fight this guy. Someone should take care of this problem. Someone ought to go do something about this. In fact, you know, Saul was so eager to find someone else to take care of this problem, to fight Goliath, that he actually offered great riches and his daughter's hand in marriage, and more, to the man who would stand up to Goliath. And you know how long Saul waited for someone to come along? Forty days. For forty days, the army of Israel is taunted by Goliath. For forty days, the nation of Israel is belittled. For 40 days, Saul sits in his tent, taking no action and refusing to go out into the valley and face this giant. Luckily for Saul, someone else did come along to fight for the people of Israel. And that someone came in the form of a young shepherd boy named David. Now notice the contrast between Saul's reaction and David's reaction. Because when David hears what's going on, and when David sees this 
giant walk out into the valley and he hears what this giant has to say, David looks around at everyone like, seriously, guys? Why has nobody done anything about this? Why has this Philistine been allowed to come out day after day and taunt the people of Israel like this? God's people. Now, his brother tries to get David to be quiet. He he says, you know, you don't know anything about war. You're just a shepherd boy. But David doesn't really listen. He he feels like that he has a legitimate question to be asked. And so he kind of starts making his way around the camp, trying to figure out why this continues to go on and why no one is willing to step up for the people of Israel. Well, of course, we know that eventually Saul hears about David and what David is saying. And Saul ends up sending David himself out to face Goliath And, of course, the rest is history. The biggest problem with the someone syndrome is that it's really the someone else syndrome. Because our fears, our doubts, our insecurities cause us to sit back and hope that someone else will step up that someone else will fix the problem, that someone else will take care of things. But as you may have noticed, as we have been going through this study, that is not how effective change takes place. Who knows how long Saul may have waited if David had not finally shown up. But what we realize in the story of Saul and David and Goliath is that God empowers us to be the someone that steps up. God is the one who gives us the strength that we need in order to have an impact on the world around us, in order to effect change in the world around us. After all, it was not David who defeated Goliath so much as it was God giving David exactly what he needed to defeat Goliath. So if you see a need in someone's life, you be the one to step in and help take care of it. If you see someone who who needs encouragement, you be the someone to step in and lift them up. If you see a problem, if you see something that needs to be fixed, If you see something that needs help or someone that could use your help, you be the someone to do what needs to be done. Don't wait until tomorrow hoping that someone else will come along. Don't give in to this someone syndrome. Be the David in your story, not the Saul. I hope that this has been an encouraging study for you tonight, and I hope that all of us will strive to be the someone that others need in their lives. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I hope that you have a great week, and I look forward to the opportunity that we have to be together again very soon. Have a great night.